In today's gospel reading from Matthew 22, Jesus is asked a question by a Pharisee who's also a scholar of the law and the prophets. That is, this man knew his Bible. He was an expert in the Jewish scriptures, our Old Testament, and he knew the Jewish faith. He asked, what is the greatest commandment of God? Give me the bottom line. What is most important? What is most fundamental to being a follower of God? Jesus doesn't give one commandment. He gives two. Meaning they go together. They are inseparable. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and... Love your neighbor as yourself. What does this look like? What does this live like for us as Christians who are called to love God with everything that we are and love our neighbor precisely because we love God? In ancient Rome, Christians used to use catacombs for their burial places. I learned about the catacombs when I was a student and a seminarian living in Rome from the archaeologists and historians who led me and others through tours of the catacombs. Here's what I learned not only about the catacombs, but about what Jesus is trying to say to us from the gospel today. The catacombs consist of miles upon miles of underground tunnels and chambers that were painstakingly carved out of the unique tufa soil on the outskirts of Rome. Tufa is a mixture of normal topsoil and elements of volcanic ash and volcanic lava. As long as it's not exposed to the air, tufa shows no special characteristics, except that it is remarkably soft and easy to dig. But when you excavate into it, exposing it to the air, it gradually becomes almost as hard as rock. And so it was the perfect environment to create a vast network of underground cemeteries, chapels to worship God and offer the Mass, and provide hiding places. You can still visit the catacombs today. When you do, you notice that in addition to the normal graves, there are thousands of little horizontal niches dug into the walls along the passageways. Two or three feet long, less than a foot high, and two or three, three feet deep. These niches are much too small to serve as a burial place for a full-grown adult. Archaeologists and historians tell us what they were used for. In ancient Rome, when Christianity was still a minority, and an outlawed re religion, it was common practice for pagan women and men to abandon by exposure unwanted or handicapped babies. Special clearings outside of the city were used just for this purpose, to abandon your baby in a field and let it die by exposure alone. As Christianity spread, however, Christian men and women started going out to these clearings to rescue the unwanted babies, convinced that the babies were loved by God, created in the image and likeness of God, and therefore worthy of human love and worthy of human life. Some of the babies who were left in the clearings outside of Rome 
would die from exposure before or even soon after being rescued by Christians. When that happened, the Christians would bury these babies in the little niches in the catacombs that they carved out for them, honoring the dignity of their bodies and caring for them even in death. Any of the children who did not die, Christians would take these babies home with them. At great cost to themselves for the rest of their lives, they would raise them as members of their families, as their own children. As the years rolled into decades, it was the witness of these Christians who were acting contrary to the laws and the culture of the Roman society. It was these Christians that caused the barbaric practice of killing babies to eventually stop altogether. And millions of citizens of the Roman Empire converted to Catholic Christianity simply because Christians followed the two great commandments of God. They loved God with everything they are and they love their neighbor with the love of God. It is a life lived passionately for God and with great conviction and love for one's neighbor that is the stuff that transformed an entire empire. We are heading into a moment in our nation when we will make known our love for God and our neighbor. No matter the cost to us, no matter how inconvenient, no matter what other people are doing in our country and culture, and no matter what it means to our lives to follow the one who should ma matter the most, let us follow the example of the early Catholic Christians who, when they followed the two greatest commandments, not only did they rescue the most innocent and vulnerable in their society, by their great passion for God and humanity, they also changed an empire and converted millions upon millions of people across diverse societies into disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us follow the greatest commandments Christ gave to us. Two commandments that are and should be forever inseparable. Let us allow our love for God and our neighbor, especially the most vulnerable in our society, to guide how we live, how we love, and how we vote. Not only can we save millions of lives each year, but we can help save millions of souls. The souls of men and women in our society and save the soul of our nation. If we live the way Christ calls us to live from the gospel, an entire nation will come back to the Lord. And the very laws and cultural practices of our country will be forever changed by how we love God and love one another.